This is basically the first built-in I've made of any kind. I was commissioned by a friend of ours to build it for their home. Before getting started, I make rough, a rough drawing and dimensions at the sketch pad. To start, I break down the two 4 by 8 sheets of plywood that will make up the bulk of this project with my track saw. It's probably one of the most used and versatile tools in my shop. If you have a small shop, it's pretty much a must have in my opinion. After breaking all the parts down to rough size, I then take them to the table saw and cut all the parts to the equal dimensions. It's much easier that way because you can set the fence once and get all the parts to the same size. I'm using a combination of both dominoes and pocket screws to join the main parts of the cabinet. This is the first time I've actually used the domino. It was a really fun tool to use and it's really going to help add a lot of strength to the case. As you can see here, I don't have a proper dust collection set up for the, the domino, so I'm actually having to tape the vacuum hose so that I can get dust collection on it. This is really where I, I felt that the dominoes really shine was in the dry assembly. It made it so great because you could put the dominoes in there and put the pieces together and really get an idea for how everything was going to go together prior to drilling the pocket screws. These parts here I'm cutting down to be extra support for the top and the bottom to sort of help prevent racking and to really help stiffen up the cabinet. For the top and bottom braces that I cut, I only use pocket screws to attach them. And for the three shelves that would be attached to the sides, I drilled the pocket screws in between the two dominoes. This proved to not only help with attaching them to it and, and making it stronger, but it also allowed me to not actually have to use clamps to put the case together, which was really handy. assembly squares here proved to be really handy to sort of help hold the pieces into square while I was gluing and uh, attaching the pocket screws to each one of these. I had the help of my buddy Jesse to help me put the cabinet together and get it all assembled. It really helped on such a big glue up panel like this because trying to get all those dominoes lined up can be a little bit finicky and it was really nice just to have somebody help for the main part line. of the cabinet so where most the of the shelves Jesse. are going to be, they wanted the back to be open so that you can actually see the color of the wall through the cabinet. But to help make it more rigid, I added a back to the bottom, the, the lower cabinet part, and I just cut a piece of scrap, three quarter inch ply I had around the shop and attached it with pocket screws. I'm using poplar for the face frame and the doors on this project because this project is being painted. And before taking these parts to the jointer and the planer, I first cut a clean edge with my track saw on the two boards and then run each piece or cut each piece at, to rough size at the table saw. Most of the boards were at least decently flat, not, not too warped up or cupped or anything, so the jointing and the playing process wasn't actually too bad at all.
I'm milling all of these pieces down to around three quarters of an inch. Once I was done milling all the parts up, I cut everything to size again at the table saw. And just like with the cabinet, I use a combination of both the domino and pocket screws to join the face frame together. The one thing that I'll say that I would probably do differently if I was going to do it again as far as using the, the dominoes to join the face frame is I put one domino in the center and a pocket screw on either side and I wish that I had actually done the opposite because because there was just the one domino in the middle when you drove this, the pocket screws in it wanted to make the pieces kind of twist and misalign with the front of the face frame. The next thing to do was to cut all the parts down for the doors. I again ripped all the pieces at the same time. I think I cut these to two and a half inches I believe as width wise and then cut all the, the pieces to length on my cutoff sled. For the construction of the doors, I'm using a combination of both dominoes and stub tenon joinery. This was my first time doing stub tenon joinery and I found it to be a relatively easy process. I cut all the dominoes first before cutting the grooves for the panel and to ensure that the panel is centered in into the rails and the styles, you basically just make a pass by once and then flip the board around and make the same pass. I cut myself a test piece as I was going along so that when it came time to cut the tenons I could actually use that test piece to sort of slowly raise the blade and and reset my fence until I got a nice snug fit into the styles on the side. Once I had everything set I cut all the rails with that same setup and it was really fairly simple. For the inner panels on the doors, I just use MDF because these panels are going to be getting painted. It really wasn't going to matter. Because of the combination of the dominoes and the stub tenons, the glue up was really fairly simple on this on these doors and I actually ended up also gluing the center panel in because it was MDF. I wasn't going to have to worry about any sort of movement. Once I had the doors in the clamps, I actually used an F-style clamp at each one of the joints to help squeeze them together because they wanted to spread apart just a little bit. I used a jig to drill the shelf pin holes and I drilled every other one so there would be plenty of adjustability for the shelves.
to give all the shelves a little bit of a, a thicker look and a heavier look to the case I added a one and a half inch or a one and a quarter inch strip to the front of all the shelves using just some leftover three quarter inch pine I had lying around I used the biscuit joiner to join all the pieces to the front of the shelves because it really didn't need to be strong because it wasn't really going to support anything and the biscuits actually work great for keeping everything lined up. Once I had all the biscuit slots cut, I attached the front of the shelves with just some glue and clamps. The initial idea when I first made the doors was just to make them in the shaker style but as sort of a last minute change as the customer wanted they wanted a cove added around all four sides of the doors and some sort of trim on the inside. For the cove I just used a cove bit and my router table and slowly snuck up on the cut until I got the desired effect. For the trim itself, this is actually just some scrap trim I had lying around the shop and it worked out pretty good. I just mitered all the corners and glued and brad nailed each piece into place and was really pretty happy with the outcome of how it looked. When it came time to attach the face frame to the cabinet, I again used the domino and just glued the face frame on and used my clamps to hold it in place until everything dried. This method seemed to work really well and I was very pleased with the outcome. You can see that I have a little bit of an overhang on the cabinet because this is a side that is going to meet up against the wall and I wanted to have a scribe edge to be able to make sure that it fit well up against their wall. After doing tons of sanding and putting two coats of primer on everything, I got everything sanded back smooth and put two more coats of uh, white latex paint that the customer had picked out. One of the last steps was to actually I used my straight edge to help attach both of the Euro hinges in place so that both of them would be in alignment. And here is the finished product. I was very pleased with how everything came out. Uh, obviously you can see it's not yet installed. I've had a little bit of a scheduling conflict and I haven't had a chance to be able to go over there yet and install it. So if you're looking for final installation pictures, look for those up on Instagram probably in the next week or so.